Hey guys, um, I'm Abby Dye and I am going to be talking over uh, just the book review over the book of The Life and Diary of David Brainerd. Um, so first, some context. Um, it was written mostly by David Brainerd, but Jonathan Edwards, um, who was a really close friend of David Brainerd, took um, the journals um, and writings of David Brainerd and put them together and kind of offered summaries of uh, explanations in some points and offered reflections on his life um, and entries. And so thus we have the book about uh, David Brainerd and his life and diary. Um, so the context in which um, this book was written, when the diary was written about his life, the period in which David Brainerd lived, um, he began writing in um, 17. 43, but he kind of backtracks a little bit. But what was going on in that period, if you guys remember from our reading in this class, um, that was kind of the period of uh, the spiritualist and the pious, um, and that, that was going on. And it was even before the time um, of John Wesley um, and the, that movement and, and George Whitfield. Um, and so the those two were responses to the um, I hope I get this right the rationalist movement um, those were responses to it and so um, that was the context um, of where this lines up and where we've been um, what we've been reading about so that was the the context and so the book starts off as I mentioned he goes back and kind of explains his conversion. Um, David Brainerd grew up hearing about God and um, he often would try to um, to earn God's favor in, in his doing good works and in his the state of his heart, like his heart attitude. Um, and so we see that in his diary. We see him explaining what his goal was and how he like felt um, just so much of his sin and, and so much um, shame about that and just realizing how he he never felt like he was doing enough and he, he was just trying to earn God's favor. Um, and it wasn't until he realized um, that it was a sweet thing, like he could never earn it. It was Christ's righteousness that, um, that covered him, um, that he describes as being his true conversion. Um, and so that point on, we see a change um, in David Brainerd's life. Um, so he uh, he begins showing um, just a devotion into, into being conformed into the image of Christ and is praying uh, for the Lord to change him and to give him compassion for the heathens. Um, and we see that happening. And then later on, we see him um, feeling the Lord calling him to be a missionary, but feeling unworthy uh, because of he's so aware of the sin in his heart. And so um, he's asking the Lord to, to empower him and, and to enable him to preach, even though he feels unworthy. And we see the Lord doing that in his life. Um, and so he, um, he, he ends up going to Yale, is kicked out of Yale. Um, and so he is commissioned by the church to go and to go to the Indians. And so he gets ready for it. And all the while, he is really aware of his sin, and he's um, seeking the Lord's strength and seeking the Lord um, for all that he needs. Um, he is always aware of his sin and of his deadness to the world and is always longing for God. Um, and so we see once he... I just have notes on my computer that I'm looking at. Um... But we see him eventually going to the Indians and um, traveling there. And so during the first first while, he feels really alone. And he feels really uncomfortable and really, at, when you read his entries, it just, he, he seems spiritually dry almost. But even the, all the while, he's seeking the Lord. Um, and so he, he has no community, no English community. And so he, he, he says at one point, his only source of comfort, 
comfort was his meditation upon God's eternity of his perfection. And so like that led him to worship. And so he he was fully devoted um, his whole life is as you can see that. And so um, he he prayed and he longed for souls to know God and that um, that was his that was his his source of joy and delight. Um, he I mentioned that he went to, to Yale and then he was kicked out. Um, he was kicked out of Yale for reasons that he wasn't didn't really happen but were thought to have happened but he went back and he wrote this letter um, to the trustees and to the people apologizing for what he had done and basically um, it was just a humble humble state of saying if I've wronged you I'm wrong and I'm sorry for any of these things and the conduct that I did do I was wrong as well and is not befitting of a Christian um, and so even in his humility in, in showing that, we see a lot of the character of Brainerd. Um, he went back to the Indians. He, he traveled back and forth um, some between his work with the Indians and um, with his work with um, his colleagues and, and things like that. Um, so when he was preaching to the Indians, he said that he focused on two main things, um, their sinful state and their in inability to save themselves, and also the fullness and sufficiency of God to provide salvation for sinners. Um, and so um, throughout his diaries, he just, he writes about his whole dependence and hope and success depending upon God, and that he lived to see the conversion of the heathens. Um, and you see the growth of, of Brainerd in his diary of him once pursuing holiness for himself and then pursuing holiness um, in the pursuit of better ministering to his um, to the Indian believers um, and so throughout Brainerd's life he's often um, has little comforts is exposed to the elements and and suffers uh, physical um, illnesses and, and physical discomforts and so um, he's very honest in his um, his melancholy, as he says, um, and in his uh, depression. And even all the while, the Lord sustains him, and he recognizes that. Um, and so, um, he is also most of the, most of the time at the beginning, he is very discouraged at the lack of fruit, and then later on, you see. Um, different points of these Indians coming to to the Lord and and showing that lack that realization of seeing their sin the mournfulness over it and seeing that Christ is all in all and and recognizing that and um, so we see one after another coming and so they form a church and they uh, baptize them take the Lord's Supper they have like um, so many people um, there and then David Brainerd eventually as he's going and traveling he's taking these believers with him and telling them to go out and make friends with people um, so that they, they'll be more receptive of his message of the gospel and so um, we see this happening um, throughout his diary and then also as time goes on you see his, 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 his physical health failing and so eventually uh, he has to leave um, the Indians that he's been working among and go and and um, he actually ends up living with uh, Jonathan Edwards and all the while he just has a longing to be uh, with Christ in heaven and just longing for his eternal home and just he can't wait for it and he keeps talking about it and so um, yeah that's those are like some of the key themes that you can see throughout the book of, of his um, just recognizing his sin before God and just seeing um, his longing to be conformed into the image of Christ, longing that the heathens would know Christ, um, and longing to be with Christ. Um, so those are some of the main themes. Um, now, what I would say that the author argued, um, I'll get, I'll, I'll mention this now. So I think Jonathan Edwards, I think in putting all of these things together, I think he was wanting people to see that 
um, first of all, like he, Jonathan, Ed, Jonathan Edwards pointed out in one of his reflections that David Brainerd didn't change, he didn't have a new revelation. He didn't um, try to change scripture, but he always pointed to the gospel. He always pointed to the character of God. And so in response to that, his, um, the way he lived his life um, came in being obedient to the world, to the word, um, and, and, and going and sharing the gospel. Um, so he didn't like change anything. He was living in obedience to it. And then also he mentions, um, Jonathan Edward mentions in a reflection that he, the response was obedience, um, and, and a life of knowledge brought a life of change. And, um, it didn't just puff up his net head, which also, um, David Brainerd mentions that he was, he was fearful that would happen in among the Indians. Um, it didn't just change his head, but it changed his heart and continually changed that. Um, so I think, I think Jonathan Edwards wanted people to see this example of humility and dependence upon the Lord and, um, just this life of radical obedience, um, to the Lord. And so I think, I think that was Jonathan Edwards' aim in, in having this book published. Um, some of the, de some of the, in looking at David Brainerd's life, um, something that popped out to me was one time he was looking at people and um, some of the heathens that were among him and he like would look at them and be like, oh man, praise the Lord that I'm not like them, um, that I would live in such a state. And as I read it, I don't know about you guys, but I, I thought of the Pharisee of who's, who looks at the tax collector and praises God loudly as that I'm not like this man. And so I think, um, and that was in the early life of David Brainerd, but I think that that was the pride in his heart coming out and just seeing, um, yeah, it was the pride of, in his own holiness and it, the whole, his holiness was for himself as he had mentioned later in the book. And so he was proud of his holiness instead of, um, even though he was seeing his sin, he was still proud that he was better than others. And so um, David Brainerd definitely um, was still sinful and still fallen. We see that even in his diaries, um, diary entries. And um, I think um, I think it would have been, I think Jonathan Edwards could have pointed that out more um, in showing and his reflections of showing that. Um, so that's, that's what I would say. And um, the last question that we're to answer is why did the Christian in that day and later eras find the book helpful? I think, um, and I, when I was looking, researching it online, um, I read that John Wesley actually took this book and, um, or took his entries and, and was like, everyone needs to read this. And so I think it, it motivated a lot of people to be um, obedient, to be sharing. It motivated a lot of missionary work, um, and it showed them um, what dependence upon the Lord looked like, um, what true faithfulness to be proclaiming um, the message of the gospel to people. And so I think even as I read it, um, I I was amazed at God's work and was moved to just wanting to pray earnestly for sinners, um, myself and for other people that we would know truly who God is. And so I think just looking at the life, he was so devoted to prayer. Uh, David Brandon was so devoted to prayer. Um, and, um, and I think that we can learn so much from his example. Um, and I think Christians in that day did learn a lot from example, his example. And I think more people in today's time, um, if we took the time to read it, would learn a lot from his example. And so, um, yeah, those are the main things that um, I saw in reading this book. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. And so I know it's not part of the class, but I would encourage each of you guys to watch it.